turns out when you look at evidence, you can start splitting decisions up into different phases. So for instance, one phase is the thing we think of when we think of making a decision, which is the gathering of evidence. And neuroscientists have started to uh, unravel that a little bit by giving very simple perceptual tasks. Say, for instance, you can take a human being or a monkey and show this individual moving dots and say, well, which way are the dots moving? And it's actually possible to measure neural activity that corresponds with the gathering of evidence to some threshold to the point of a decision. But that's just one part of a decision. And so what we really wanted to get into that piece um, is the question of what are the other components of a decision. So for instance, in undecided voters, the naive view might be these people, these poor benighted souls, have not yet gathered enough evidence and they somehow are just wanting that one little bit of further evidence. Well, that may not necessarily be true. That's a, sort of a naive view. Another possibility is they, in fact, have already committed to a decision, but they are simply unaware of the decision that they have already committed to. I mean, nominally speaking, you could imagine that you could have all that time to gather evidence and gather more evidence. Now, now as it turns out, that's actually not the case. So for instance, in simple perceptual decision making with the moving dots, getting back to the simple moving dots situation, uh, it's been shown that after a certain point of gathering evidence, um, people and monkeys will stop gathering evidence even if that evidence may help them make a more accurate decision. And so there's, uh, there's some kind of trade-off in which there's a process in which evidence is gathered and then the window closes and, hey, you can show, the, you can show that monkey more dots, but the monkey's done. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and so there, that commitment has been made internally and then the report gets made. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, in something like uh, a presidential election, there's the added advantage that reporters want to know what's on your <laughs> mind because you're undecided. How could that be? And so there is you know, maybe even a weak yeah. advantage to, to expressing indecision. And so for instance, um, there is a study of undecided voters in Italy. These undecided voters could not, uh, reported being undecided about how they felt about the expansion of a nearby US military base. And this is a controversial thing. This is a study that came out in Science Magazine a few months ago. Um, and what happened was that these uh, psychologists who are studying these undecided Italian voters um, asked a, a series of rapid word association questions, automatic responses, showed them pictures of military bases and said, do you think that's good, patriotism? You know, and they'd, they'd be asked to match up words. And this automaticity was um, more natural with positive words for people who eventually decided that they were in favor of the expansion, less natural for people who were against the expansion. And it was possible to predict a week in advance how these people would eventually vote. And so that's an example of information that's latent in us that we may in fact not be aware of. And so in fact it may be that we are in some sense committed, but we're just not aware of that decision. And one thing that neuroscientists are interested in now who are studying um, these processes is the idea that perhaps you could have a brain center or brain centers that gathers evidence and reaches threshold for making a commitment. There might be another brain center that expresses confidence in the decision, okay, or, that, or even the very awareness of the decision. Here's another example that I think uh, many of you may have encountered from everyday life. Um, you may be presented with a dilemma, say, whether to take a job in a new city. Um, the pioneering um, psychologist Amos Tversky uh, once did an informal survey gathered over years uh, asking people, well, how, his colleagues, in fact, asking, how confident are you that you're going to take this job offer? And there was a tendency for people to underestimate their own certainty in a decision. The, the, the idea is that people would say things like, well, I, I'm not sure, but I'm inclined to probably take it, but I'm, I'm still thinking about it. And what he found was that people almost always went and did that. And so, the, so you can be pretty committed to a decision, yet yourself be unaware of it. And in fact, for instance, <laughs> if you um, are very close to someone, let's say you, you know, your spouse, for instance, might be aware of your decisions before you yourself are aware of those decisions. And that's an example in which your mental processes may not be available to yourself, but they are available to someone who, who knows you well. And so these are just examples of layers of uncertainty to take the idea of a decision and to break it up into its components and to see that in fact it's something so simple that you might imagine you know, being integral to our consciousness is in fact composed of components that are just not explicitly uh, accessible to us.